we're here today with Judge David Savitt, a uh, longtime judge of the Philadelphia Courts. Nice to be with you. Thank you very much for coming, Judge, um, because I know you have a lot of interesting things to tell us about. <laughs> uh, can we begin with, with your early life? Well, I was born in Philadelphia, but I was raised and lived all my early life in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed every minute of it. I went to school there and I went to high school, to Atlantic City High School, and uh, lived there up until I graduated from law school and I left the Army and then I moved to Philadelphia mm -hmm. where I practiced law mm -hmm. and have lived ever since. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you also, <clears throat> you, you told me you went to uh, uh, the University of Pennsylvania Law School. I went to Rutgers Undergraduate School uh -huh. and I went to the University of Pennsylvania Law School and then I spent two years in the Army. Okay. And then I, <laughs> I came see. to Philadelphia to practice law. Uh -huh. When I uh, applied for college, it was very, very difficult to get into any college uh -huh. because I graduated high school in the class of 46, and the war ended, if you uh -huh. know, in April of 45, and the applications for college were inundated by the whole last three or four years of graduates who all went immediately into the service. Right. So all the colleges were very difficult to get in. Yeah. And I remember I got accepted to Rutgers by a telegram oh, and yeah. because the space was vacant and my father <laughs> bought me a whole box of treat blades and sent me, <laughs> off to, uh, sent me off to college. I think he wanted to do something for me because I didn't know what to do, so we bought out the store with razor blades. <laughs> I and, remember the old treat blades, I do. <laughs> and uh, then I went, I don't know, you want me to keep talking? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I went to Rutgers and I uh, joined a fraternity there and I remember my father was an upholsterer at the beginning, and we were poor. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't know we were poor. It yeah, wasn't well, important. I understand. When I was outside and I fell down, I didn't look to see what happened. I just wanted to make sure my pants weren't torn. <laughs> yeah, because the old man would have given. <laughs> and uh, then uh, uh, we used to buy a, a hot roast beef sandwich in the town tavern, and my mother would add a few slices of bread and take uh -huh. out, and we would all. Oh eat. yeah. <laughs> but then uh, during the war. He got into the Venetian blind business. Am I talking too much? Man? Not at all. And Feel uh, what happened was the army had all the hotels down the shore. Yeah. And they wanted to put Venetian blinds in the Haddon Hall of the yeah. Ritz Carlton. They said, Can you do it? He said, Yes, I can. <laughs> and that's how we got the Venetian blind. Yeah. <laughs> it's when I was a young lawyer, if a, if a uh, client came in and said, Are you a corporation lawyer? Yeah. I said, Are you a corporation? <laughs> If you're a corporation, I'm a corporation lawyer. <laughs> That's how I got into corporate law. <laughs> Actually, I was mostly in criminal law, uh -huh. as, uh, but, but did everything. Had many interesting cases and interesting uh -huh. clients. Can you yeah, tell well, us? I went to law school that? at Penn, uh -huh. and uh, I, I, I was a senior at uh, Rutgers. I applied mm -hmm. to, I got in, I thought I'd have a lot of trouble, but I got into Virginia and Penn and Georgetown. Uh -huh. I think I was waitlisted at Harvard, and mm -hmm. I went to Penn. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first year, I was scared to death. Yeah. But I, I thought everybody knew more than me. And yeah. the law, to me, a lot of these guys, their fathers were lawyers. They were I lawyers. see. Yeah. My father was an upholsterer. Now, of course, I have two sons mm -hmm. who are lawyers. Of course. And so. their situation to go into law school is different, but, and their, yeah. their practices are different. And I can talk about that later. If you wish, but anyhow, I got to law school and graduated in '53, and I wasn't that sure of myself, and my grades weren't that good, but they were okay. Uh, I roomed one year with Jimmy Capiro, who became a state. His father was a state senator, uh -huh. and we had a good time. Became friendly with Ed Bradley there, and I graduated in '53 and uh, was drafted into the army. I went in August. Mm -mm. Now I did take the bar in July and did not pass and uh, it, it was expected because my mind wasn't on the bar. My mind was graduating still in law school, and, still yeah. and getting out and going in the army right, and right. I, was, I went in the summer, that summer I went to Nantucket and I went, so I didn't do that well mm -hmm. and I w was in the uh, army. And I was mm -hmm. in the Army for two years. I was at uh, 
Fort Meade, Maryland, Camp Gordon, and I learned a lot in the Army. Okay. I hated every minute of it when I was there. Yeah. And when I look back, it was a marvelous time. Yeah, yeah, right. So and, many experiences. Uh, it taught in life humility. Like oh. It taught how to take orders. Mm -hmm. It taught how respect for authority. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a tremendous experience. And I met some friends of mine that I kept all my life. All these years. Who were in similar positions to me. Yeah. And then uh, when I got out of the Army, I, uh, by the way, in summers, the kids who go to law school now, every summer they work in a law firm. I didn't yeah. know from working in a law firm. <laughs> right. I worked over a cab <laughs> oh, okay. with uh, Dr. Halpern. <laughs> it was, uh, we were cab drivers. Uh -huh. I sold baskets on the parades in Atlantic City. Yeah. I worked okay. at the racetrack uh, as a valet driver. Yeah. I worked in a flower shop. I worked, put salt water taffy on the boardwalk. Uh -huh. I did all, that's what, I, I had every job known to man yeah. growing up. And that too was a wonderful sure. experience. You know, I used to beat fudge on the boardwalk. And you I did? Say, well, then you, well, I was in Prelinger's at Arkansas in the boardwalk, and I was in the window with the machine yeah. making the salt water right, taffy. Right. I worked in Pennyland where we'd give out the coupons when they, uh -huh. I had all those jobs. Yeah. It was terrific growing up in it. When yeah. I said, and during the war, there was a dim out. We had to have all the lights out. Right. On the, yeah. And uh, you would go up on the boardwalk and meet girls and <laughs> go to the ball. It was terrific. Yeah. And anyway, when I got out of law school, I uh, had to get a preceptor. And the first job I got was through uh, Marvin New, who was Judge News uh -huh. father. Oh, okay. Marvin New and my mother were first cousins. Buddy New was my second cousin. Uh -huh. right. And uh, his father was a title clerk at uh, Commonwealth Title. And I had a job. Uh, he got me a job with Alberg, Meshon, and Brenner. Alberg then was a, Josh Alberg later became a congressman. Right. They had some problems. Yeah. But I worked with them and clerked with them. There were three of us and we got $15 a week. <laughs> and I was a clerk. Yeah. And then I got a job with Harold Elkman, and I, uh, with him, I tried subrogation cases. Uh -huh. So I was in court actually trying municipal court cases right. with juries oh. in the municipal court oh. for eight hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. It was representing the insurance company who paid the, uh, and then were seeking reimbursement. Oh, okay. And then I saw that John Patrick Walsh. Uh, I had somewhere I met Bob Thompson. Oh, I wanted to go to the public defender's office. Mm -hmm. The public defender's office, then Sprague was there, Bob Gabriel was there, uh -huh. and there were, and I really, I wanted to be a criminal defense lawyer. But uh, there was a vacancy in the defender's office, and I applied. Uh, I forgot the name of who was in charge of it. Neat guy. Yeah. And Bobby Thompson, who had been with John Patrick Walsh, got that job. Uh -huh. Because of the experience he had had with John Walsh, who was a very eminent, I don't know if you remember John Patrick Walsh. No, but. Very that's eminent okay. criminal lawyer. Uh -huh. Very, uh, like at that time it was Walsh, McBride, Bill Gray, uh, okay. <laughs> Benny Lemish, Gary Levy, they were, they were the guys. Oh. So I went, he said, go to John Walsh, maybe he'll give you a job. Because he was, well, he was getting the defense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to him. And I said, I'm on a job. He said, where are you from? Atlantic City. He said, where are you a lifeguard? That's the way <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was a lifeguard. No, but if you need So one, anyway, <laughs> he offered me the job. He said, you get $162 every two weeks, and you can keep your whole practice. Well, I had no practice. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, but I had an office, and I was with a lawyer of renown. Right. And he and had some learning. very serious cases. Now, what happened was, he rep I got the job in March of 57. Uh, I had, I'm trying to think, I got married in February of 58. Mm -hmm. In July of 58, around July, for Bill, uh, Tom, uh, John Walsh represented Bill Green. Oh. Bill Green, not... The mayor? No, the mayor's father. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. The mayor, Bill Green mm -hmm. Sr. at that time, was the political leader of Philadelphia. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Yeah, okay. He was very in close with the Kennedys, mm -hmm. and he got 
in trouble with Toby Hada. Oh, okay. There was an arrest, and him and McClinchy and the whole gang were arrested, and it was a big thing. And John Walsh got sick a little bit and was institutionalized. Oh. And the argument was July 7th, and we were practicing at Tom McBride's. Tom McBride was the attorney general. There. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, McBride, Von Meshisker, and Bradley. That was, the, and John Carroll was with them. Okay. And uh, McBride said, thing. don't bring, let Dave, that's me, yeah. argue the case. And it was an appeal. We were trying to recoup the judge, Judge Murphy, uh -huh. who had been in Congress with Green, uh -oh. and we said he couldn't be fair right, because right. he would bend over backwards to be fair, and he would be unfair. And yeah. the truth was, I don't think Green and Murphy liked each other. Yeah. Okay. And anyway, I argued the case on the July Fourth weekend. My wife, who was newlywed, said, "What are you doing? We're supposed to go down the shore." <laughs> yeah, I, I got to argue this case. Well, every politician in Philadelphia was in that courtroom, and I argued it before the the circuit. The uh, 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 it's the Third Circuit. Third here, Circuit, right? In Bank, mm -hmm. all of them, all and of we them. argued the case. And as a result of it, there was a three-three-one decision. Uh, three said the appeal was. Uh, not timely. Uh -huh. Three uh, ruled against me, and Kaladner, who was on the court board, but in any event, the timeliness issue prevailed, yes. and they had to. They they said that the issue remains. Right. And the bottom line was the judge was removed. Okay. We sort of won the case. <laughs> okay. Now, that was years Getting after, I wanted to way. get. Yeah. I, then I'm, I'm with John Walsh all these years. We represented Don Battles, the RDA Club. Uh -huh. We represented Harold B. Robinson from okay. the automobile. Yeah. Uh, we represented Pastor's Pharmacy. He was the first guy to put in uh, uh, mail order drugs or oh, sell yeah. drugs, yeah. By, and the pharmacy board stopped them. And I argued that case in the. Uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court was okay. reported in ALR huh. uh, because we won that case. Yeah. They said you can okay. dispense drugs. And, and sure enough, it's I had the thing to do today. I, I had the Basergi case, which was the first case after Matt versus Ohio. Mm -hmm. on, I really tried. Uh, the first murder case I tried was a kid named Goldsmith. And later on, I had him, many years later, I got him out of jail because uh, I, I'm not sure his name. Frank Wright, the court reporter, was a drunkard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and he never recorded the notes. <laughs> oh, God. And when I went to the appellate court, I'm yeah, no notes. You don't I don't have anything. That was, that was grounds for a, a mistrial, yeah. too, because there were no notes. He couldn't. Yeah. Uh, 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 he couldn't. Oh, that, was a, uh, my, that was a PCRA later on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I tried a lot of cases with uh, John. Well, a lot of cases, and he would call me. He he called me three o'clock in the morning. He'd say, Dave, <laughs> what about this case? And, and we would talk. My, my wife got used to it. The, the defendants, uh, uh, murderers, would call us from the prison. Oh yeah, right, sure. We represented the Birdman and the Lopinson case. We had. oh yeah, no I kidding. tried about eight to ten murder Huge cases. Huge cases. As a judge, mm -hmm. I tried. 800 or more homicides. I think, think, I think I, as a judge, tried more homicide cases than anybody in the world. I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> because I was, you know, we had that homicide program. Yes. And, that and when I left as the court administrator, I was on that program continuously. Okay. And I tried about 40, 50 cases a year. Some were pleas, some were waivers, some right. were juries, right. some were very important cases. I also had the Rizzo recall. I don't know. Oh, did you? The wow. Rizzo, I recalled him. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, one thing about Rizzo, at that time, I wasn't too happy with Rizzo, and I supported Green for mayor. Right? Yeah. But one thing about Rizzo, he was loyal to his friends. Oh, yeah. And he, as I look back on it, he was a pretty good guy. It's sort of like the army. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't well, like it doing, then. Right. And, and uh, uh, but I have run the gamut. I started out as a flaming liberal, uh -huh. and okay. now I'm very moderately conservative. Okay. I'm much well, more. 
conservative. Like I'm worried about this governor in New in uh, this mayor in New York. Yeah. If he okay. taxes the rich too much, they'll move out. Then the rents will go down. There'll yeah. be too many apartments. The chambermaids will lose their jobs. So it, it's not it's not it's not good. You I uh, as a young man thought there might be some sense to a socialistic uh, type of uh, economy. Yeah. But I'm convinced now that's not true. If it was utopian and everybody thought the, the same The demise way. of the Soviet Union and the, after the Cold War made it clear because people need to compete. They do. They need to prosper. They yeah. need, that doesn't mean you have to hurt your com no. competitor, no. but there's something about getting ahead of the world. You don't have to be ashamed to be rich no. and to succeed. <laughs> no, I guess not. And to succeed. I'll let you know when I get there. I, but. Anyhow, <laughs> I was, you know, let's see. I got out, I, I was in the, le oh, I ran for the legislature. Yeah, First I, I ran. you were in the I was in the legislature. First I ran for city council against the guy named Tommy Giordano in South Philadelphia, mm. and I didn't have a chance. Okay. I bought, I put, uh, uh, I put poll watchers in the 30th Ward or down South Philadelphia. I give mm. them ten dollars each right. and uh, they see him for any buddy see him for any who I didn't yeah. know too well picked all my poll watchers up <laughs> and took them to the racetrack and told them to bet <laughs> concoct and print and he says to me you know what Dave the horse would <laughs> that's how buddy always I later became very good friends with buddy so and, and well when I was in Harrisburg he was the chairman of the appropriations committee in oh, the right. senate okay. and then I came up there when I was court <clears throat> administrator to yeah. get the budget Right. And uh, to get a pay raise for judges. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, what are you going to do for us? <laughs> I said, nothing except be good judges. I'm yeah. not coming up here to be bribed. Make I'm coming deal. up here to right. get what we are entitled to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't afraid to, to say that. And the legislature. Did it work? I, uh, the, well, yeah, they, we could go the races. Yeah, when, yeah. So I started. My first, when I was first started practice law, judges got eighteen thousand. Oh. When I first became a judge, they had just gone from thirty-five to forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. I think now they must be getting about one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. So it's, but it doesn't like mean 70. they're getting more money because uh, you can get a full course dinner at a restaurant for sixty-five cents. Yeah, right. Back <laughs> then, yeah, I, re right. I remember <laughs> a cup of coffee was a nickel. Yeah. And a big double dip ice cream cone was a nickel. <laughs> Now there are no nickels. No. <laughs> There's nothing. I don't know what to do anymore. with a nickel anymore. But okay. yeah. Anyhow, let's see. So I, you, 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 in the game? legislature, I was right. there five years, and I ran for DA. That's what I when I was going to run for DA. Specter was the DA, and uh, I wanted. He was a Republican in those mm -hmm. days, and I wanted to be. Uh, he lived next door to me. He lived on a Warden Drive. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, run against him. And uh, Rizzo was the mayor, and I thought Rizzo was going to put up somebody. And uh, Camille was, uh, uh, and I wanted to run against Rizzo's guy yeah. in the primary, in the okay. Democratic primary. Right. But what happened was they endorsed Emmett Fitzpatrick. Oh, Emmett right. was a good friend. Yeah, and Emmett that. was not a Rizzo guy. He was not. He was nobody. Oh, Emmett. okay. You remember? Yeah, you know I do Emmett? remember F. Emmett Fitzpatrick. F. F. Yeah, and he had because he offered my wife. She's a school teacher. He offered her a job to uh, be the witness coordinator for uh -huh. the but she didn't uh, take it. No, we were we were good friends, and yeah. he went on to win. Yeah, and he was such a good DA that he lost the next time. <laughs> Remember, he had that bananas, apples, apple Schaefer was one of. I don't remember. There was a headline in the Daily News: <laughs> "Apples goes bananas." <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? Specter criticized the judges. Emmett didn't. Oh uh, right, he, yeah. Specter made a, uh, uh, and of course, back, I'll have a grand jury, and I'll yeah. be over again. Yeah. I, as the years went by, I, I became friendly with Arlen and liked him. And Brendel, when I was court administrator, well, I became court administrator for about eight years mm -hmm. when Bradley, because Bradley wanted me to. Yeah. And okay. Camille thought that was a good idea. And he, yeah. So I became the court administrator. Most of the patronage came from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, she would, she would recommend there would be good people, but. Yeah. We didn't. I remember there was patronage, but we wouldn't hire anybody under any condition who wasn't uh, qualified. Mm -hmm. 
Ed Bradley is the most honest and decent and intelligent man you'll know. Yes. There is no question. Okay. And if he ever deviated, I'd say, I want you to go home and talk this over with your wife. Yeah. <laughs> if she agrees with you, we can do it. We interviewed because, him. <laughs> he's a really likable guy. Oh, so, yeah. he, he's marvelous. Yeah. He's marvelous. He still thinks his hair is black. <laughs> He made a couple of references to his hair. <laughs> well, he thinks he's never going to get old. Yeah, okay. But uh, he, no, he was he was terrific. I mean, he was very young when he became a judge. His father had been county chairman. His brother was a, a law professor at Penn and then became a partner of McBride. Mm -hmm. And his father and mother met, I think, during the First World War in Italy. Oh. His father's Irish and his mother's Italian. Oh. She was. A, and his father was a friend of Lyndon Johnson. So, oh, no kidding. You know, okay. and that, but uh, uh, he tells stories. That yeah. they, they were terrific family, terrific people. Yeah. Uh, well, I got to know, well, I'm Jewish, but mm -hmm. I got very friendly with Italians and Irish. Like, yeah. well, John Walsh was, and then McBride right, and John Carroll. Then I had Gallagher and Kelly working for me. Yeah. And then uh, uh, we, had, we were friends with all the Italian, Peruto and Charlie G. Piano. No, I had a marvelous life because yeah. I was a lawyer, I was a legislator, I taught the ITA course at Temple. Okay. I taught in the uh, paralegal school. That's where I taught Arlene and sent her to Pam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I taught in the paralegal school. I uh, taught in all these seminars. I, uh, I was a judge. I tried cases. I yeah. had I had, everything was good. I'd say to my kids, you know, if I would have um, gone for Rizzo on the, uh, <laughs> when I had the chance to recall Rizzo, yeah. I would have been on the Superior Court. Or Superior. <laughs> I ran for the Superior now. Court and lost, and I ran for the Supreme Court and lost. But they say to me, you're doing fine, Dad. Don't, you well, did fine. You did. Now, my sons, <clears throat> my, uh, the oldest son was on the Law Review at Georgetown. He went to Cornell, Georgetown top of his class, mm -hmm. was invited to some top firms in New York. He went to Seattle. He formed his own firm, which I was very leery of. Yeah. Now he has 16 lawyers oh. at Savitt, Bruce, and Willie, and it's a very well, it's a good size firm mm -hmm. in Seattle, and he's doing terrific, yeah, and I have three grandchildren. My other son, Billy, wanted he didn't want to be a lawyer until he decided to be a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> then he went to Columbia. He was editor in chief of the Law Review. He clerked in the United States Supreme Court, and now he's a he's a chief of litigation with Wachtell Lipton, which is the biggest in mergers and acquisitions oh. firm in the world. Okay. So he's wow. making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now he's, happy there, he's a lawyer. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he's happy as lawyer. Well. He lives in New York. You, if you don't, in New York, the lifestyle with the children they have and everything yeah. else, you have to make a million or you're in oh, poverty. Right. Yeah. yeah. Seattle, if you make three hundred thousand, you're pretty good. Yeah. You know? it's, so I don't know, but both of the boys are doing terrific. They don't need my money. I don't need theirs. Which is good. <laughs> They've been healthy. Thank God. Yeah. I have six grandchildren. Well, congratulations. The only big problem is they don't call their mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, she can't take it. That's yeah. the age-old problem. <laughs> I know. Son, it. Well, she don't. She she doesn't quite understand it. I have trouble with her. She's out to lunch with Arlene. Uh, well, let, let me uh, let me ask you about a couple of other questions. Okay. Do you have time? Sure, yeah. I got time. Okay, I'm enjoying it. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, and I am too. Go ahead. Um, about the the practice of law, then when you began, compared to today, are they different? It seems to me that it's vastly different. In mm -hmm. the first place, one of the questions you had was, "You did you do pro bono work?" Mm -hmm. And my answer is. Not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> but you do did do bono, bono work. Are you kidding? I was striving, struggling to make a living. Yeah. I wasn't going to do, do. Here's what I did. A guy would call me in like one o'clock in the morning and say, "My brother got arrested. He's down at uh, 
uh, Levinson Wharton and having a preliminary hearing. Yeah. Will you represent him at the hearing? I said, sure, $200. Yeah. He says, okay. So I go down to the hearing the next morning. God says, I have $8.70. <laughs> <laughs> I say, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, give me the 8 Now, that's the kind of pro bono work okay. I did. Yeah, right. <laughs> but pro bono? No, I never do that pro bono. <laughs> the law practice was, as far as I can see, I don't really know how it is with the criminal law, with people getting arrested and going to trial. My guess is there isn't that much change there mm -hmm. in okay. jury selection and preliminary. Right. The library, the research has changed where I wouldn't be able, I don't even think we're going to have books anymore. Yeah. And a part of our law training was legal writing. And <clears throat> you had to look through the books and you had veils and uh, ALR and all sorts of library. And now I don't think they do that. Yeah. So I think the legal research has changed. I don't really know. Both, both of my sons are doing things that I never did. Or right. Anything. Yeah. Billy, every like he, uh, they have a motion named after him in Delaware. They yeah. call it the Savit motion. Oh yeah. He goes to Delaware because that's a corporate headquarters. Yes. There was an article about him in the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal uh -huh. that uh, Vivendi two cost eight point two billion dollar motion. His oh. cases are all billion dollar cases yeah. because, and Jimmy's practice is he has what you would call a, uh, it's like an elite, <laughs> they don't, uh, he doesn't take accident cases. Right. I would guess from seeing TV ads and that a lot of the law is not much different. Mm -hmm. And even from like Lincoln's time, a little, little, you go in a courtroom and you try a case with mm -hmm. a jury. Yeah. But I think the uh, in criminal law, in criminal law, yeah. I think, and the other, I really don't know the answer. I would imagine that divorce law and family law and things can't change that much. That much, I. But uh, and uh, with the, I really was never familiar with the working business end simple. of it yeah. and the corporate end of yeah. it and things like that. I never did that. But for how many years were you in the homicide program? I mean, well, I was a I became a judge in seventy four. So I was I was court administrator till eighty three, so from eighty three uh, until ninety eight at least that's when I've been mm -hmm. so at least for twenty years. That's a long time. And to be tried, that's on. why I tried eight hundred. Uh, I have sorry. I have each one of them home listed. Yeah. I don't have I have each name, date, waiver, oh, I see. and result. The so result. I I don't yeah. know that. Yeah. I, 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 uh, a friend of mine, Herb Schlosser, he was president of NBC. I grew up with him in Atlantic City. I saw him. He said, what are you doing, Dad? I said, well, I try homicide cases, just murder. Mm -hmm. He said, that's it. That should be the title of your book. Uh, yeah, just, right. Just yeah, murder. Just murder. But I, uh, I am writing a little memoir. About, are you? Yeah, I'm like halfway through. I need to find a court reporter to dictate it because it's all in longhand. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, the la I, I uh, as a senior, I worked as a senior judge for eight years, the last two of which were in family court, mm. where I heard the uh, s adult sex cases. There were with juvenile uh, uh, with, complainants. With, that's correct. Yeah, and that I, that uh, exposed me to some of the most horrendous things. Right. That's that, an ugly courtroom. Yeah, say. but the the other side of it is half of them were the most unfair accusations. Ah. In other words, there were two sides to it. There yes. were the horrors. But there were also, like some kid will say, like, uh, my mother kept me home from school, or yeah. my mother put me in the corner, or yeah, something like right. yeah. crazy. And that thing would get in court, too. Yeah. So uh, there has to be some equanimity. Some, right, sure. Uh, but uh, I did that. Well, and that's what I, you're for, right? Well, then I decided I wanted to be a lawyer, but I couldn't go to CLE. <laughs> and then I gave that up. And then as the years go by, I'm older. I'm 85 years old. I'm going to be 86 wow. in May, and I'm not that physically adept. Mm -hmm. uh, my psychiatrist said, your big problem is your body is older than your mind. <laughs> I can identify with that, and I'm only 63. Well, it's the truth. Like, I'm still able to think and articulate yeah. and talk.
but I can't do as well. Yeah, and I, can't, I know you I, I have uh, issues. Uh, I fell a couple of years ago and broke my hip. Oh, that's that a killer. Started, yeah. Uh, yeah. That started. Uh, anyhow, I'm sorry. You maybe want to ask me other things. I just seem to talk and talk. Well, no, I mean, this is exactly the kind of information that I, that I was hoping to get. You spoke about a lot of your cases and your early experience and the people you admired. Were there other people aside from your prefector and, and the people? Yeah, well, there were John Patrick <coughs> Walsh, Tom McBride, the great lawyer. Uh, there was a lawyer named Cormac Malloy. Uh, and what's his? He was with Bill Gray, Gray, Schaefer, and Malloy. Uh -huh. Gray and, later to become the and, U.S. congressman? No, 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 no. Bill Gray was the top criminal lawyer in the city okay. at the time. He was mm -hmm. not the congressman. And okay. uh, Frank Anderson. And Cormac Malloy and the other, uh, uh, John Rogers Carroll. Do you know John Rogers Carroll? I know the name. He was with, it was Mac, he was with McBride. And both of them had an opportunity to work with me for a couple of years in, uh -huh. when I was with Walsh. Uh -huh. And they're, they're super lawyers. I can't understand how they knew all that they knew. Yeah. The other super lawyer who was my dear friend was Donald Goldberg. Do you know Donald? No. Donald was a lawyer. He started out with Gary Levy and then he, did white collar crime, uh -huh. oh, I see. and he was with Ballard's Bar at yeah. the end, uh -huh. and uh, he uh, he represented. He, he said, uh, "I would charge these enormous fees, and there'd be like ten defendants, all these white collar defendants, and yeah. they each had three lawyers, and they're oh, right. the yeah, sure. saying I would be representing the most important guy, and I come in myself." The guy said, "How much?" I have three lawyers. He said, well, we don't need three lawyers. <laughs> he says, well, do me a favor, Don. Get me two more lawyers. <laughs> I don't care how much it costs and what they do. I don't want to be embarrassed with my friends. I don't so it looks good. <laughs> get, why not get me three more lawyers? Donald look son <laughs> uh, is in the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh -huh. and uh, he, Don always practiced alone. Another very close friend of mine as a judge was Mike Stiles. Do you know Mike? Yeah, I do. Mike know. was a homicide. First, he was assistant DA when Rendell was DA. Okay. He was first assistant. We used to have meetings. Ben Lerner was the defender. Bradley was the president judge. I was the course administrator. And Rendell and, uh, would come in with mm -hmm. uh, Mike Stiles. Yeah. And, my, and Rendell comes in and he says, Jeez, I forgot the name of it. this judge. You you know him. He was an African American judge. He was a uh, you would know him. But anyhow, he started laying in to him. That yeah. judge is no good. He not shouldn't be on the bench. Yeah. So I said, Bradley's there. I said to him, we're in Bradley's office. We're in this office. We might be right here. Yeah. I said, I don't want to hear that from you, Ed, about talking about judges like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, he's no good. To, uh, I said, well, you're out of here. I chased him. Uh, because I took the position, by the, way, by the way, he was dead right, Rendell, yeah. about the judge. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't matter. Because yeah. Rendell, I say, you're out of here. Rendell looks at Bradley. Bradley says, if Judge Savage said you're out of here, you've got to go. <laughs> <You're> the <CIA laughs> yeah. Because he was in the president of the judge's office. He was the D Mike Stiles never forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you threw Rendell out. But I... I took uh, my position was and is. Yes. I can criticize the judges. judge. I can do it, and anybody can criticize in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. But you don't come in to me and to bad mouth right. judges, and that's not what he was. What he was doing, he did it. Specter did it. Fitzpatrick didn't do it. Now yeah. they were they were all honest. I was friends with Randell. After that, uh -huh. now he's such a big shot, he don't remember anything. <laughs> of course. I've had that experience, too. Uh, yeah. Well, Rend uh, who, Rendell? Yeah. Uh, well, with knowing people in the early yeah, now days. Now, Mike Stiles and, then became a, a top judge. Homicide. Uh, when we tried, to, he, his office was, of course, from mine, mm -hmm. and he was the only one I would talk to about a case. Uh -huh. Because I had, he's smart, and yeah. I had confidence in him. Yeah. I would talk to him. Some the other uh, the judges. My experience is uh, twenty percent are terrific, twenty percent are terrible, sixty percent are okay. Okay, <laughs> that's about it. Well, that's true. But the that, population that's is correct. Cool, right? that, okay. Same with the legislature when I was up there. Twenty yeah. percent were terrific. Twenty percent were, but the the ones the a judge who's a thief. 
Oh. Deserves no, that is the worst thing you can do. Right. Like when I had friends, I treated them fairly. Mm -hmm. I might have even been a little nicer, mm -hmm. but not with respect to the decision regarding the case. Right, okay. And I always knew, and I, and I always saw, I was learned early, a young a man, who, I'll tell you, I could tell you the story, but uh, during the war you couldn't get cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy, he was a bookmaker, he was a f father of a friend of mine, and he had cigarettes and he used to give me a carton of Philip Morris every time I wanted it. <laughs> I don't smoke now. Yeah. And I went one time to him, I said, I need a carton of Chesterfield. He said, who are they for? I said, they're for me. He said, they weren't. They were. He said, they're not for you, Dave, <laughs> but I'm giving them to you because you're my friend and I'm your friend. You ask me, you tell me, I give it to you. But I want you to know something as you go through life. Never forget who your friends are. Okay. Well, that's stuck yeah. with me. Yeah. Anytime, Jimmy Tayoon would call you on the phone when I was court administrator, and yeah. he would say, I'd like to get a job for so-and-so. I'd yeah. say, come on, Jimmy, I ain't about hiring that person. Then he would say, thank you, Judge, I appreciate the consideration you gave. <laughs> because the guy who would he's talking right to there. is standing right there. <laughs> Anybody who asked me, judge or not judge, to do something I shouldn't do, yeah. not my friend. Right, okay. And no, I no, never true. asked it. Like Mike Stiles, when he was U.S. attorney, was my friend. Mm -hmm. If I asked him to hire someone, he would have done it. Mm -hmm. But I never would have asked him to hire anybody who right. he shouldn't, yes. who I knew his standards. Because you considered him a friend I of yours. It. By the way, he hired Arlene Halpern's son, David, as his court, and he did it because of me. But I never asked him to. Mm -hmm. I never asked. David's doing very well now. He's a nice young man, but I, you see, uh, but that's how he uh, he got the job. Uh, is is there is there anything any other uh, you know a question that you think I should have answered or something else you want to discuss about your life and your career? I don't know. The only thing I can say mm -hmm. is I am eternally grateful for my life and for my career. I enjoyed, our, we were, our life was full. We were involved with the unions <laughs> when Judy yeah. was on, the, on strike as a teacher and I negotiated with them. I knew our, our life was filled with all sorts of different people. My life in Atlantic City was with who I grew up with. My right. life in college, I had a whole set of okay. friends I kept all my life. In law school, another set of friends. In the Army, another set of friends. Yeah. When we lived our life, we socialized with all kinds of people. There were like a, there's a lot of people who socialize with their own kind, like yeah. uh, the 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 Winfield Jews or their social. Okay. Life and the, yeah. But we had everybody. We the le all the legislators, and I became a ward leader. <laughs> and I well, I was the committee man, and yeah. when I was in the legislature, and the ward leader said, "You become ward leader." So I was the ward leader. Yeah. I remember uh, asking. Uh, uh, Herbie Feynman, our son, how, what do you do when people give you parking tickets to pick? Yeah. They give them to the ward leaders. I said, I am the ward leader. <laughs> I would never fix a parking ticket. Yeah, well, that's I the would, thing. Even a parking, I would continue it. Yeah. I would call, get a postponed yeah. and say, go in there and tell your story. Yeah. And if it was someone when I was, who I was particularly interested I might even go in with them yeah. and argue the case before the judge, yeah. and we almost always would win. Yeah. Well, if you go in. You as a matter right of way. fact, when I was a motion judge, I handled appeals for moving violations. Mm -hmm. And I'd get a list of about 30 guys, and they all come in and tell a story. I found almost everyone not guilty mm. because I took the position that if a guy gets a moving violation and loses in traffic court and mm -hmm. takes the time to appeal uh -huh. and comes up and says it, it must be an important thing. Right. There must and be uh, if they it. did that, and I it see. wasn't uh, the only time I didn't do that is when they came in berating the court or the judge or the cop. Right. Okay. If they came in, I, <laughs> okay, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Now I wrote a book, by the way. Oh yeah. yeah, I was the first grand jury judge after the new grand jury act was passed. Oh. We had a new oh. grand jury act passed. Okay. And I wrote a book called Pennsylvania Grand Jury Practice and Procedure. Huh. 
and it's the it was the book on that. I, I, and I, uh, and it's I, something you don't usually hear about, you know. No, I mean, it's, it's in a lot. And as a matter of fact, as recently as a year ago, I got a call from the library in Washington County, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> Could they have a copy of the book? Huh? I had two left. I gave it to them wow. because I figured it's better to, that you have it than I. I only have right. one book left over, yeah. and it never was reprinted. And but. Lawyers used it. I don't. Uh, it's probably in the library here. Well, library. In the you know, it's a hardbound book, and it's Pennsylvania grand jury practice. Well, they're starting to use them more now here in the criminal courts. Of grand jury. Yeah. They're well, they grand. use now. See, it's only the law was changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the law of contempt came into that book when they refused, and the, the lawyer can go in with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, oh, it's yeah. secret, but not secret. From the witness, the witness can tell what he said if he chooses to. Okay, but I remember, and I have the book. I should. Uh, well, congratulations. Well, it's been a long time. <laughs> well, speaking of which, I'd really like to thank you, Judge, for coming in today. Okay, I want to thank you.